Yesterday I was doing my daily reading and, ooh, this is a bit funny up here. I'm not used to this. Um, and I was in Genesis 48 and it was where uh, Jacob was about to die and uh, Joseph brings his uh, sons to Jacob and uh, Jacob's eyesight's failing and, and he crosses over his hands. It's that story. And so what um, the Lord was ministering to me was one verse that stood out. And Jacob says in verse 11, he says, I never thought I would, I would see your face again. Some of, some of the uh, pastors here and families here, thank you. <laughs> I have children who are not in the faith. And the, the, the end of that sentence is, Jacob says, I never thought I'd see your face again. And here I am seeing you and my grandsons. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Now, Jacob had been absolutely hopeless, hadn't he? He never thought he would see his son again. He believed what turned out to be a lie, but he believed evidence. Maybe you've got evidence uh, that your son or daughter is not in the faith. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. The other th interesting thought that's just come to me there is, if Jacob had never transitioned from Israel to Egypt, and he didn't want to, he would never have seen his son again. And his grandsons. Wow, well, that's powerful, isn't it? So, uh, I know that I'm the sort of person I just love home. I love comfort zone. And I'm married to a man who wants a life of adventure. <laughs> Which is fine, except that he won't go without me. <laughs> so, I'm still laying down. Even yesterday, the Lord is challenging me to lay down my vision of sitting at home knitting. <laughs> That's what, I, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> but God says something different. And uh, the question that the previous guy said, inside him niggles, the th um, it's not a question in my heart. What actually I keep hearing is, follow me, follow me, follow me. And if you're following Jesus, you can't stay in your little house knitting. So, Jacob said he, would, he thought he would never see his son again. And in the New Testament, you know that thing about Ephesians 3.20? God's got things we would never even dare to ask or think. Well... When, uh, whatever year it was, Pastor George put the, um, the challenge out that Will and I answered, move, we were comfortable in Rugeley, we were being pastors there, we planted it, everything was going really well. And but that during his sermon, we both knew at the same time, independently, that we were to move to Manchester. We both knew where. Well. It, that was a very uncomfortable church plant. But what happened was, it saved our kids. Our son was at the point of rebellion. Not openly, he was still sitting in church because he knew that was the, what he was supposed to, but he still, although he was, I uh, can't remember, 
maybe 20. He still wasn't independent. And we're going to Manchester, and you're not earning enough to live on your own. What are you going to do? He came with us. Manchester turned out to be the place. He'd, he'd already had a conversion experience twice. There's no perfect kids allowed. Because <laughs> none of us have got perfect parents, eh? He found more Christian fellowship there and challenge, and he turned and he met the girl who would become his wife. That turned, and do you know, God orchestrated our daughter that year, got married, and where did her husband get his first job? They were both graduates out of university, Manchester. So they both worked with us in that church. And so things you would never dare to ask God or think. God's got a great plan. The New Testament tells us it's not us who does it. It's God who works in us. And he's got the power. He's got, he gives us the desire. He gives us everything that we need if we believe for it. And the, the uh, Pastor George qu uh, quoted a verse the other day. Um, As you go step by step, the way will open up before you. I'm just going to say that this has been the saviour of my family, beside Jesus. Upside down, praying God's word. How many of you actually got a copy of this? How many of you got a copy? How many of you used it this year? Use it. Use it. Whatever situation your family is in, the wives have got a great part to play. And even if it's just following reluctantly and standing up in front of unfamiliar people, <laughs> you have a great part to play. An anointing. And us ladies, we need to have our hearts reflected in our family. What is the point of gaining the whole world and losing your family? Don't lose your family. It's within your prayer power. They can never escape your prayers.